In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use Snell's law to solve for a critical angle. In this particular case, we're talking about um, moving from water into air. So we have the air up here and the water right below. And let's cover a couple things before we get to our diagram and get into more of the details of what the critical angle is. So first of all, you want to make sure you have a good understanding of what N is. N is the index of refraction. And basically what that is, is the ratio of these two numbers, C, which is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, divided by the velocity of light through a certain medium. So here's an example of some different media, um, air, water, ice, glass, and diamonds, things that are transparent that light can travel through. And basically the more something slows down in a certain medium will create a smaller number here which would then create a larger index of refraction. Um, so diamonds would be the greatest on our list, and then um, air would be the least, where it basically creates an index of refraction of one, slightly larger than one. So what's going to happen is, as there's an incident ray of light coming up from the water, it's going to get bent away from the normal. The normal is a, an imaginary line that's perpendicular to the surface of the water. And then if you increase that angle, to a certain amount, remember the angle is always from the light ray to the normal, um, that refracted ray is going to get bent at 90 degrees at a specific point. Once it reaches that 90 degrees and the light isn't actually uh, transmitted and refracted through the next medium, that is the critical angle. And then any angle beyond that is then going to get internally reflected. Okay, which is called total internal reflection, just as the name suggests. So we want to find that critical angle, which is that specific angle where the light ray gets bent at exactly 90 degrees. So if you go above that angle, you're going to get that total internal reflection. And then if you stay below it, you're still going to get the light ray um, transmitted into the air and then just refracted from the normal. All right, so let's go ahead and clean up our drawing a little bit. So here's what we're looking for. We are looking for this angle. This is going to be our critical angle. And then we know that if it is the critical angle, it's the point where the light ray gets reflected or excuse me, refracted at 90 degrees. Now we're going to go ahead and use uh, Snell's law right here where we have the index of refraction and the angle on one medium in one medium and then the index of refraction and the angle of the second medium. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything for water. So the index of refraction of water is 1.33. And then we are looking for that angle. So that's an unknown angle. We'll put a little C subscript for the critical angle. And then for everything in air, um, the N value is slightly greater than one, but it's usually just rounded off to one. So we'll call it 1.00. And then we do know the angle the critical angle is when that refracted light ray is bent at 90 degrees. Now, if you work that out mathematically, uh, sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1, so we can go ahead and cross that out. And then we would take that 1.33 and slide it over here so that we can cancel it on the left side. And then basically how you get your final angle is you always take the inverse sine of of the refracted index of refraction divided by the incident index of refraction. So basically the um, medium you're going to divided by the medium that you are currently in. So you always have to be in or within a medium that has a higher index of refraction and then coming out to a medium that has a lower index of refraction or you won't have a critical angle and you won't have any light rays that are totally internally reflected. So when you go ahead and put this into your calculator, we get a final angle of 48.75 degrees. Okay. 
which comes out to about 49 degrees. So if you're standing waist deep in some water and you're looking around, if you look around next to you, you're, you're able to see under the surface of the water. If you look out anywhere that is greater than 49 degrees, it appears to be completely dark because all of that light is then totally internally reflected once you go beyond the critical angle. So if you try to look underneath the water a little bit farther away from you, you're not able to do so for that reason. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand index of refraction and how to solve for critical angles. Thank you for watching and listening.